Amen. Shundai somebody. Can somebody say Shundai? All right. Hallelujah. <coughs> we live and in person. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study here at Faith and Victory Church. And I know that we're up now because I'm talking to myself. Just put it out so I can share it with you guys, and then I have to hear myself. All righty. There we go. All right. Uh, we started last week in um, talking about, and, and it took us some time <coughs> to go through this. I was reading uh, all this out of the Complete Biblical Library um, on trusting in God or trusting or having faith in the Lord. We talked about the Greek word that we that we, can be translated faith and or trust, pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. And um, we talked about how the words were formed, how they came out of the classical Greek, the Septuagint Greek, the intertestimonial Greek, um, the New Testament usage. And we, we kind of, we, uh, we covered all of this. We covered all of that um, um, information, which you now have in your hand in a printed format, okay? Um, if, if you want it in, in electronic format, let me know, and we can get it to you, or let Ellie know she has it, um, and Dick has it. I, got it. I sent it to them because they requested it, and so, because I forgot to bring it Sunday, and because I forgot to bring it Sunday, I got home and got it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyway, if you want it that way, you can get it. Um, but now let's go. We, we talked about last week. Um, and remember that one statement we made that was really good about um, that faith is not a passive, um, you know, uh, acceptance um, and, and resignation like that of the faith, you know, something like faith. That is because I got turned off. I died. I'm blinking. I got a blinking.
amazing. We were able to send them $500. Hallelujah. Um, the, the gifts came in over 400 as we just made it the different side of the church because yeah, that's what the Lord had put, kind of put in my heart, 500. And, that, and so I got an email, a text back from Cindy. Oh, precious Ed. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed overwhelmed <laughs> so, we love them we love what they do for jesus amen hallelujah we love what they're doing over there glory to god amen so let's jump in first john 5 4 now we were what 10 minutes later we're jumping in seven minutes later we've been out in the water with our toe in it deciding if we're going to jump hallelujah <clears throat> first john chapter 5 verse 4 for the, for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So we know from, and, and you, again, you have to go back to last week and the notes you have in front of you that we gave out, to understand the, the migration of the word faith out of the Old Testament into the New Testament, and all the different periods, classical, septuagint, and testimonial, New Testament, and to get the understanding of the meaning of it and you know, all those different things. I think one of the things that we covered last week was the, um, the, three, of the three of the different Hebrew words that were used in translating faith um, into New Testament usage, and, and I mean, or, or in Old Testament usage, and those those verbs and how they meant certain things, and um, like the Hebrew batak um, was used to rely upon, put confidence in, shesay, uh, shesay, to seek refuge in. Uh, these were uh, two of the words that the, the Greek the uh, the Greek word pisces was used to translate in the Septuagint. And so we kind of get we get this underlying meaning, um, and then imana, imana, uh, fidelity, faithfulness, uh, aman, faithful attitude toward the, you know. So we got we got all these things that kind of came into that meaning. And so we get we kind of gathered a richer understanding of the word faith or trusting in God. We know that we can rely upon Him. We know that we can seek refuge in Him. We know that we can put our confidence in Him. Amen. And um, and that we know that um, when we do that. That, that, that we have a, um, a faithful God and we have a, you know, and, and he's faithful towards us. Amen. And um, the word Aman in the Hebrew it also meant that to trust God with respect to his word and his promises. So now we get, we get this meaning of faith and, or trust and or faith. It could be used either, it could be translated either way. And we come up and say, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith, our confidence in him our ability to seek refuge in him, our ability to rely upon him, our ability to put our faith in his promises and his word. Amen? We can trust God to be who God said he would be, we, which would annihilate such churchy statements that we all think sound so spiritual, which are so biblically inaccurate. You never know what God's going to do. Going to do. So I'm not just walking around going, well, you just never know what God's going to do. He might heal you and he might not. It might be your day to get saved. It might not. Come on down today. This might be your day to get saved. Hey, hey, don't make statements that the Bible doesn't support. And we live in the era of the soundbite. <clears throat> Everywhere. T campaigns are about soundbites. They're about a 24-hour news cycle. Everything that's done in the campaign of politics now is for a 24-hour news cycle. So they want to make a statement that gets on the news, hits all the cycle for 24 hours, and then they got to be ready in, within 24 hours for the next one. Well, now preachers have become soundbite preachers. we got to come up with the, the, the soundbite that people just go, whoa, and they're all, all over. And sometimes, and, and quite frankly, now, now, Nowadays, there you go, there's, there's my phone. Yep, just did it. Yep, so I can't find out who's watching. We love you. And uh, praise the Lord. Double shun die. <clears throat> we can't find out. Um, pe people aren't going and looking at the Word of God. But they got that news bite. It tickled their ears. They felt, woo, by that statement. But there was not substance in it that was biblical. But it sounded good. And people just, oh, yeah. I mean, who wouldn't love? Because you're under grace, you don't have to repent. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to tithe. You don't have to give. You're under grace. It's just going to, you know. Well, good gracious sakes. It's just like the TV commercials. 
that promise you you're going to lose 80 pounds in four days by drinking this detox formula with no side effects and without one ounce of exercise. And then you're going to look like ripped over. You know, they got to go get some of the guys in the gym an hour and a half, two hours a day, seven days a week, and he's the commercial guy. Hello? I mean, he's got his abs have abs. I mean, you know, they're all ripped up, you know. He doesn't have the keg or the pony keg or a two-liter. You know, his six-packs have six-packs. And he got that from drinking detox formula number 27. You know, I was, I was, you know, they show some picture in the bellies out here, and, you know, all of a sudden he drank this, and he's ripped with no exercise at all. Well, that sounds what? That's a sound bite. Everybody just goes, wow. And they get excited about it, okay? And we do that with the Bible. And so we get people going, well, you never know what God's going to do. You just got to trust him. And, oh, yeah, I just got to, you know, I don't know why I'm going through what I'm going through, but I'm just going to trust God because I have no re idea why this is happening, and it doesn't matter. What God wants to do, God's going to do. If he wants to heal me, he'll heal me. If he doesn't, he doesn't. He'll, he has a reason if I don't get healed. We walk out of there with that sound bite, and we start, people live their lives off of these things, and they're not even biblical. And so they, they go through life living off of something because it, 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 it was a sound bite. People jumped on it. They got a little book out of it. You know, people came to hear their seminars and, and all this kind of stuff. And I'm going to tell you something. We have to be diligent to present the truth in its wholeness, in its context, and its fullness without just trying to get something that everybody goes, woo, or ain't that the truth. Okay, so the Bible says that we overcome the world. Uh, this is the victory, victory, the victory, not the defeat, the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith, even our Pisces, even our trusting in, our putting our confidence in, relying upon, finding our refuge in, you know, uh, believing his promises in his word. That's how we overcome. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 say, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. <clears throat> now, what kind of path is he going to lead you on? It's going to be a path of victory. Now, it doesn't mean you're not going to encounter trouble on that journey. That's why you have the faith, the trust in God, to be able to go on that journey and face the giants, face the battle. That's why he put all that in the Old Testament. So you can see that when Israel went into the promised land, there were giants in the land. There were things to overcome in the land. But every time they kept their heart on God, kept their eye on God, they overcame, they won, they defeated, they came out victorious. <clears throat> Amen. I mean, they got to, you know, they get to Jericho and the guy got the, listen, them guys had a walled city that was so wide you could ride six chariots across, side by side across the wall. That's a big wall. Archaeologists have found now that the, the walls did not fall over like you see in the, the Hollywood movies, that the top of the wall is level with the bottom of the city. Why? Because God's not stupid. What good does it do to knock all the walls down? The army's got to come in and fight, miss all the boulders while the other guys are just shooting at you, and you're missing all the boulders trying to get in. And just ran across. Yeah. Praise the Lord. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Put your trust in him. He's not talking. Well, he's going to direct your path. Hey, lead us not into temptation. Jesus said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You know, when God tempts no man with evil, God's not leading you into destruction. And even if you are led, as Jesus was in the wilderness, to a place where the enemy came to tempt, he already had the equipping to win. Jesus went into the, into the wilderness and full of the Spirit. He came out in the power of the Spirit. Glory to God. Are you, can you say amen? And what happened? He was tested. He was tried by the enemy. But he already had the goods to win. 
And the Word of God does say in the New Testament, God will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation make a means of escape. It doesn't mean He sent it. It doesn't mean that He directed it your way. It means you're on a journey. There's an evil enemy out there, but you've got the victory. You've got the Word. You've got the faith to win, to overcome, and you take the shield of faith and quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Glory to God. You don't come out and defeat Him. You don't come dragging in going, Oh, when the saints... Come dragging in. Oh, and this. No, glory to God. We go marching in with the banner of victory over us. Praise God. We go marching in as the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. We go marching in with the blood-stained banner of the Lord Jesus Christ that purchased our victory. Praise God. And said, these are my children. They're winners. Glory to God. And they took up faith. Glory to God. And won the battle. Glory to God. Amen. That's who we are. We're not the defeated church. We're the triumphant church. Glory to God. Blood washed, blood bought, blood kept. Glory to God. And we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen. We need a shouting room. We need somewhere to be able to run in here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <coughs> Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say hallelujah? Yeah, what's that mean? I don't know. Just sounds good. Amen. We put our trust in Him. We put our confidence in Him. We rely upon Him. One of the lessons that the children of Israel taught their children is they went out of the wilderness to die because they weren't going to get to go in. You you had to you had to know this was one of the lessons that when God says go, don't act, don't say anything, don't question anything. Get on your marching shoes and boogie across the boogie wherever He says go. Because you are going to, you're going to spend the rest of your time out here in the wilderness if you don't. Amen? And when I tell you when it was time for them to go in the next time, there was no question. There was no argument. There was no, well, there's giants in the land. Amen? Because they had heard Caleb for 40 years. They had heard Joshua. Or as Brother Hagin used to say, Joshua. You know? <laughs> Hallelujah. They had heard them for 40 years say, we are well able. We are well able. Can't you imagine sitting around the fire with Caleb going, well, guys, I just want to tell you, the ones that don't get to go in, I feel sorry for them. But there's a mountain over there. And I've already told, I told Joshua, and I told Moses when I came out, that's my mountain. Now, I don't know how long before we get to go in, but when we get to go in, that's my mountain. And then we in five years, they had to march around five years. So he didn't get to go get his mountain right away. He had to help him do all the winning of the battles. I know Jericho and all the things they did. And then he came out. Joshua said, okay, I've done everything. We've done everything. I want my mountain. Hallelujah. And in 85, he went through the giants off and took it. Hallelujah. That's what faith will do. I said, that's what faith will do. Can you say Amen. The, the Proverbs 29, 25, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Shall be safe. We got people going through calamity and destruction and misery and all kinds of garbage happening in their life, and they're saying, well, I'm just trusting God. No, if you're trusting God, you're going to be safe. You're going to be kept. You're going to be sustained, praise God. Can you say amen? 73, 28, uh, Psalm. This, but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Now I see people get up and oh, I just want to know. It's been a hard old life. It's been so tough. You know, but I've trusted God through it all. I just don't know why he did all this. I can't understand why I've gone through all this. But you know, the Lord had a reason. Oh, bless his name. I'm just, I'm just trusting him. And one of these days on the other side, I'll know some victory. Oh my goodness. Well, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I am going to commend them. They wouldn't give up on God even when they were going through a hard place. They wouldn't quit. They did have some, and they need some cheese to go with their wine. Because they got a whole lot of wine going on. Okay? But the fact of the matter is, it's an, it's an unscriptural testimony. No, you put your trust in God. You were able to declare His works how He brought you out. Amen? 
We spend so much time trying to, to get people convinced that you know, God has a reason to get them to not fall away from God and get angry at God when they should get ticked off with the devil and go after him with the sharp two-edged sword of the Word of God and put a hurting on him and tell him, your, t your time is up, pal. I'm done with you. I'm done with you doing this. I'm done with you messing with me. And your day has come. Your day has come to encounter the Word of God and the sword, the sword of the Spirit and the, my shield of faith. Glory to God. Now let's get it on. Amen. 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 Job 13, 15 says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him but I will maintain mine own ways before him. Now, the Bible says that when Job said all he said, he did not sin. Why? He didn't sin because it was lack of knowledge. When he's saying, you know, he didn't, you know, he, when he was saying something, it was because he didn't know. He didn't, he didn't know why. He thought God, you know, of course his friends were coming to him telling him that God did it, you know, and the Lord did you know, and have you checked this to see why that's happening because God's doing this and all this kind of stuff. But he did let the cat out of the bag in, in the third chapter where he said, the thing that I feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of has befallen me. Fear opened his door. He just didn't, get, he didn't have that understanding. Fear opened the door all that. This sacrifice was children, thus Job did continually. For he said, they may have, said, they may have, uh, they have sinned in their heart and cursed God. He was constantly offering sacrifices to cover his children because he thought they were going to die and go to hell. Hello? And it was the oldest book in the Bible, so we didn't have anything else to go on. He was just, you know. Okay? Psalm 37, 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Now, wait a second. If you're trusting in the Lord and doing things the right, according to the way he says do them, you're going to dwell in the land and eat good. You're not going to be going around miserable, barely get a long street. Next, you know, I'm on Barely Get Along Avenue right next to Grumble Alley. Hello? It's 37.5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in the way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Don't get upset because pe wicked people are prospering. Just rest, rest in the Lord. What? He has entered into faith. He just, is trusting the Lord has entered into rest. You're resting in the fact that you can take your refuge, you can commit your way to him, you can trust his promises, it will come to pass, and you will have exactly what he said he would do. Amen? Psalm 62, 8, trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge to us. Remember what one of those words meant? God, you know, that we, he can put our refuge, he's our refuge, we can put our trust in him. <clears throat> Psalm 115, 9 through 11, O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Well, that was for the Jews. He was talking to Israel. Have you not read in the New Testament that we are the Israel of God? Amen? O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear in the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. He's your help and your shield. We keep going, and, you know, the devil is kicking our backside. Now, I saw a meme on Facebook yesterday. It was I don't spend a lot of time, but it was hilarious. He's got an ostrich with his head in a sandbox. <clears throat> and there's a lion sitting there beside him, talking to him. Two, bit, two, two, thing, two bad pieces of bad news for you. Number one, I can still see you. <laughs> Number two, that's my litter box. <laughs> well, anyway, I thought it was funny. <clears throat> we stick our head in the sand and go, oh, whatever, I don't, just, you're going to hide. No, we have to be aggressive. We, the kingdom of, violent, kingdom of God suffereth violent, and the violent take it by force. We win by being strong, being strong in faith and not quitting, not giving up, not looking back, looking forward, running to the roar, glory to God, taking the enemy on toenail to toenail, nose to nose, eyeball to eyeball, and saying, I've had enough. And today is your day, glory to God, to encounter a man or a woman of faith, full of faith in the Holy Ghost. And I got the word, and the word says, boom. Yeah, good pity. I got a whoop. Hallelujah.
They that trust in the Lord, oh, I'm sorry, I, I think, no, no, no. They that trust in the Lord, Psalm 125, 1. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. Now, we used to sing something we sing in church. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. You get right out of church, I'm talking about how bad things are you're going under. Hello? Sit right there and sing, I shall not be moved. You know? I'm trusting in the God. In God, I'm like Mount Zion. I can't be removed. Glory to God. I abide forever. Singing the song. Oh, uh, well, it was me. You know? I mean, you're singing, I shall not be moved one minute. The next minute, they get out there and start watching, singing the hee haw song. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. <laughs> oh, my deep, dark, depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. How many have forgotten that song? You never saw Hee Haw? There's, there's, well, it's probably not a good song to listen to. <laughs> but you probably, I guarantee there's a YouTube video of the Gloom, Despair, Agony song. <clears throat> Grandpa's at Gloom, Despair, and they got the little hit pitchfork. And, <laughs> and that's, no, that's, she met another, and <laughs> she was gone. That's right. That's right. Where, oh, where are you tonight? <laughs> All right. That's what we need to tell the devil. Where, where are you tonight? <laughs> yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I got faith and you're out of here, pal. Glory to God. Yeah. Psalm 146, 3 through 5. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is now. It's not talking about Jesus here. No. <clears throat> it's talking about mankind. Don't put your trust in mankind. Where there is no help, his breath goeth forth. And returneth to his earth in the very day his thoughts perish. Talking about man. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord their God or his God. Yes. Why? Because man will let you down. Man's going to come up short. Man doesn't have the answer. Amen. They can give you the best they can give you, but at the end of the day, it's not enough. You need the word of the Lord. You need what God has given unto you. You need that which produces faith on the inside. Glory to God. Somebody asked me all the time, they asked me all the time at school. I get teachers, I get, you know, why are you always so happy in the morning? I get on people's nerves, actually. Our secretary shuts the office door because she don't want to hear me going, good morning, everybody. How y'all doing today? Welcome to school this morning. How y'all doing? The kids, they have debates in classes whether or not they like it or not. Secretary, shut the door because I'm too, I'm too happy in the mornings. Yep. But somebody there once wants somebody say, Why are you always like that in the morning? I said, I got something on the inside and it's working on the outside. Glory to God. Now the Christians get it. So the, some of the teachers go, oh, Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> our, our course teachers, the Christians, she'll come in. Well, let's raise the roof. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Do a bon, to les tomp. Hallelujah. I've even got one of the students. She's, she's always having a hard time staying happy. She's always going to walk around like, like, like a pig pen and peanuts can. Got that little cloud over her. And I can talk to her and get her out of it. And I, so now I, had, I make her say, because she was taking French, I make her say every time she sees me, do a bon tout le temps. Now I say, actually, leave a bon tout le temps. Life is good all the time. Yeah, so life is good all the time. I got her speaking that. I got her saying that. She'll, she'll go, mm, Mr. Taylor, I don't want to say Leave a bon to les temps. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. And she'll walk up and smile. You know, life is good all the time. Hallelujah. Why? Because we got Jesus on the inside. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? I can trust him. I can put my confidence in him. I know in whom I put my trust. Glory to God. Paul on that boat. Hallelujah. The angel stood beside him and said that, you know, that you will not lose anybody on this boat. You'll lose the ship, but you won't lose any person. And he stood up before those guys and said, for, wherefore, brethren, I believe God. Hallelujah. Wherefore, brethren and sisters, I want you to know, I believe God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Amen. Amen. Woo. They that trust may be in, uh, they that trust, uh, that thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. God makes things known to you so you can put your trust in him. Amen. Isaiah 12, 2. 
Behold, God is my salvation. Now, I, I will trust and be not afraid for the Lord Jehovah. And that was the Lord, Lord. That would be, you know, King James just went ahead and put Jehovah in there. But it would be been Lord and then capital Lord, okay? Uh, is my strength and my song. He's also become my salvation. We got that little song. Jehovah is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Jehovah is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Nobody. Amen? Well, that's, where, that's right there where that came from. Right there is where it came from. That verse right there. Hallelujah. You know, glory to God. God is my salvation. God is my refuge. God is my strong place. God is my deliverer. Praise God. God is my all in all. Hallelujah. Praise God. I trust in Him. I don't put my trust. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say glory to God? Hallelujah. Not by might, not by power, but by my... Hallelujah. Spirit, say, I started to say strength, got tongue tied. But by my spirit, saith the Lord. Not by might, one says, not by might, not by armies. But by my spirit, glory to God. The spirit of faith, hallelujah. We believe, therefore we speak. We also believe, and therefore, I mean, as it is written, we believe, therefore have we spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. This is what? The spirit of faith, glory to God. We speak truth. We speak righteousness. We speak and make declarations of victory out of our mouth. Praise God. Can you say amen? Thou wilt keep him, to Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. I'm telling you, folks, when you get a revelation that God is the answer, God produces the answer in you. That faith is produced in you. You can keep your mind on Him and not the problem. Glory to God. Because He's going to bring you out with a strong arm. Hallelujah. And demonstrate that He is the Lord God Almighty. Amen. You can't help it if the preacher comes on Wednesday. you got to just preach on Wednesday. Can you say amen? Oh, my. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord, in the Lord. Aiden came out of me just then. The Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. And whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and they're spreading out of her roots by the river. And ye shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaves shall be green. And shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall ye cease from yielding fruit. Now, I, I find out something about roots. We, um, I did some work in my yard a couple uh, a month and a half ago, you know, got, trying to get some stuff cleaned up, and, and went out in my front, flower, front flower bed something area. It was, it was a wilderness. Yeah. Cleaned it up, shrunk it back down. Because what happened is you know, the, the weeds would get on the edge of it, and I would just kill it with Roundup, and they would just put in pine straw. And, just, and it finally got about about twice this, twice these arm widths away from the original with pinched pine straw. Well, it was just, there was nothing there but pine straw. So I took it all up this year, planted grass, you know, put in topsoil, planted uh, seed, put uh, hay down on it. It hasn't grown. This, this fall, plant in the fall. Okay, I got it. Plant in the fall. But apparently the pine straw that I did put down had some kind of weeds in it. I've got the healthiest. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're this tall. They're just bunches of, of, of grassy weeds that's going up this tall. And I'm going to get a letter from the Homeowners Association. And I've been out there, and I'm having to go out there and take a, take a pointed, it's not a ho-ho, but it's, it's like a little, like a little um, it's, it's, it's a hoe, but it's got a pointish end instead of a regular end for like making rows, you know, kind of. And I'm kind of getting in there and pulling it up. Well, these roots, I mean, they're, they're pulling all the way up, all the dirt up down to the, 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 the barrier that I had down from years ago. You can hear it just ripping off of there. And you pull it up, and you got these weeds, and then you got this root system. This, it's crazy. I mean, I put, I got it, I'm hooking it, I'm, I'm putting everything I got on it to get it up. I'm like, are you stinking kidding me? And then over here, I can't get, it, I can't get the grass that I paid for it to grow. 
I'm just going to go out there and put the word on that too. Grass grow, weeds die. I mean something. But I wanted to say, root systems can get so ingrained that you, they just suck up the water. This stuff sucks the water up, man, baby. It's just it's like, let it rain, let it rain. And they'll grow another foot. You know? I mean, I looked at it like last week, week, a week or so ago, because I hadn't had a chance to get to it because of working. Um, it wasn't that bad. But all that rain came in? It's like, who shot steroids on the weeds? I know what it was. The landscaping come by, companies come by at night and shoot it with fertilizer, you know, and then put a thing in your mailbox. You need for us to come by and help you with your yard. Amen. Ephesians 1.12, that, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. We have to put our trust in him. Amen. We have to put our trust in Christ. He is, he is the answer to everything that we deal with. Glory to God. His word. Praise God. And um, I think that was my last verse. I had no idea I was going to get to preach tonight. Amen. Amen. Can you say amen? God is good. When? All the time. I said all the time. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. We can trust God to deliver us. We can trust God to bring us out. We can trust God to do what he said in his word. I am not going to say you never know what the Lord's going to do. I got a book full of knowing what God's going to do. Don't always know how he's going to do it but I know what he's going to do. Amen. He's going to deliver me. He's going to secure me. He's going to cause me to win. He's going to put me over. Amen. I will come out as the head and not the tail. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Well, we sure hope you all enjoyed it. And I about preached myself happy. Amen. If I had a running area, I just had to take off running tonight. Glory to God. Amen. Some of y'all may not believe this. That's why I used to preach every service for 90 minutes every week. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Y'all remember those days? Every service, wide open. Well, might, who knows, might be going back there because that was just, I love preaching. Amen. Uh, Buddy Harrison said one time, and listen, we, we love you guys. We sure appreciate you. Listen, uh, be blessed. Join us on Sunday morning here at uh, Faith and Victory Church. And until then, remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God bless you. We'll see you next time here at Faith and Victory Church.